Hello, my name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a trainer and consultant at Angular Architects, and this is a series about Injurix best practices. In this episode, I want to discuss a problem that appears in multiple variations, multiple shapes. Luckily for us, the solution is always the same. Let me give you some examples. Let's say we have a form or a user submit. We are dispatching an action and inside of our NGRX an effect is triggered and is sending an HTTP request. When the HTTP request finishes, we want to redirect the user. The same, the same principle, but just in another scenario is that we want to show a message box where we are displaying some kind of text like your changes have been saved. Or it could also be the case that our component wants to show a loading indicator, something like this, so that the user knows, okay, uh, our system is doing something, I need to wait. Let's see how this can be implemented. So here we are with our application. We see here our, our home screen. If I click on customers, I can enter the edit form or add form and when that, once I'm done with editing all these fields, I can click in, on save. And what will happen then? We have here our submit function, that, it's the, that, that is the handler function. It is just verifying if this form is of course valid. And then depending if this form is used to add or to update a customer, it is dispatching a proper action. In the case of an update, we see that we have here a concat map, which is starting the HTTP request. Once that is done, we have the map operator, which is returning the update, updated action. And at the end, we see the redirection to our customer list. So this is how it is done in the effect. There is also another possibility. We could do the redirection inside of the submit handler of this form so we could for example place it here but of course then we have the problem that when the user is redirected or that the user is immediately redirected although the request is still ongoing and that's of course not something that we want so these are the two cases that i see quite often how redirecting or redirection is done with nginx so what's the problem here? The problem is that Injurix knows the URL that it should redirect to. Let's say we have multiple components, then it is very likely that every component wants to redirect to another URL. Another thing is that I don't want that Injurix is aware of my complete URL structure. So I don't want, let's say when I need to change the URLs, the routings of my system, and I just want to fix this in my components. I don't want to go into NGRX, especially into the effects, and look for all the redirections and all for all the URLs uh, that are integrated there and replace them as well. So this is not something that I want. I want to have a loose coupling between the components which handle the URL and NGRX, which handles the state. So the solutions that at least I have seen so far are that maybe you add an additional property to the state, which tells, yes, now I'm done with the loading. Our component has a selector to this property. And when it changes its value, then it is doing the redirection. So the component is doing the redirection. In one of our former episodes, you have already seen that pattern load status property. This is very similar, but it's not really the same because the load status property is actually something that is an internal property for the state itself. We should try not to expose it to our components. I mean, we have done this, but we will hide this property in the upcoming episode when we'll be talking about facades. In our case, when we say the component needs to have a selector against the property because it wants to do the redirection, then we can't just hide it. And that's the problem here. That's also called an implementation leak. The other problem or the other 
alternative solution is that in your components you are if you're injecting the action service that you use normally in the effects of course this is also not something that i want because just just because of the same reason that i mentioned before uh, but just the opposite i don't want that my components know too much about nGRX. the actions is a service that the effects should be using and not my components my components are only dealing or only uh, communicating with NGRX via the store and that's it, nothing else. Try to keep these parts as much separated as possible. Don't do something like injecting the actions or some similar services. Just don't do it. Okay, but how do we solve this problem then? Well, we just need to split this up into two different tasks. There is one task that defines what should be done and there is another task that knows when this should be done or which is actually doing the execution of it. And that's exactly what we have. We have a component and we have an effect. The component defines what should be done. That means to what URL should be redirected, what message should be shown. And in the effect, we know when the HTTP request is finished and then the effect can do the redirection or it can show the message. Now, how can the component tell the effect what it, what it should do? Well, we just need to extend our action. So the action will get an additional property that can be an URL tree or a message, a normal string. And then our effect is just using this information to redirect or to show the message box. And by doing that, our effect has no clue about the URL structure or about the context where this message appears and so on and so forth. It's completely separated. Sounds like a good solution. Let's see how we can implement it. So here we are back again in our application and we will start now with implementing a forwarding when we add a new customer. Then we will see how we can achieve that we want to redirect the customer after it has been added to an edit form. And in order to do that, we will have to know the ID of the newly generated customer. So that's also something very interesting. And then of course, we will also deal with showing the message and in the end with the loading indicator. But now let's just start with a basic redirection. For that, I open my actions. I have here my add action and there I just have to add a new property which is called forward and this will contain the URL where we want to forward. I also need to go back into my component because now the component needs to add the forward property and in this case it is just slash customer. Okay. So now the component defines what should happen. Um, the thing that's missing now is that the effect, that the NGRX effect is executing that. So directly into my effect, we have here add customer. We see here already from before the static redirection to say so, to say so. And what I will do that I will move this tab to the HTTP post method, which is here. And of course, I also need to fetch now the forward property from my action and I use that instead of the URL. Done, that's it. Of course, now we, we need to try it out if it really works. So I go into the customers, I say add customer, Muster, a very German name, has been born today. I click on save and we see that we are redirected to customers. You could not say, well, that's not the difference to what we had before. Well, we could of course also say we redirect our users to holidays, uh, but of course that's just to prove that it's working. And let's go into the component again and we say please redirect to holidays after a new customer has been added. 
add. So close. Another name. Germany. Also born today. We save it and we see it works. So we are now at the holidays page. Let's move that back to customer so that it makes some sense. Okay. And now I don't want to redirect to the list of the customers, but what I want is that I want to redirect the user to the edit form of the newly created customer. And the edit form is requires the ID of the customer in the URL, of course. And now it becomes a little bit tricky because at the at this point in time when we are actually dispatching the ad action, we don't know yet what the ID would be. And for that, we need to make now a slight change, small change. Our action is not containing just a normal string, but the forward becomes now a forward supplier. It becomes now a function that returns the string. And by that we can, we can achieve this. So I can say this is forward supplier, supplier. It is a function which has, of course, the ID as parameter and it returns a string. The ID will then be added by the effect. But now the, com the component has the possibility to know the ID and it can define how the URL should be. So I say, okay, this is then the forward supplier. I am getting an ID, which is the number, and I use interpolation, string interpolation, where I say, please, this is the URL for the edit form of the newly created customer. What's missing? The effect also needs to be changed. And in this case, I'm getting the supplier, the forward supplier. We see that the HTTP POST method is already receiving the ID. So that's very easy for us. We are getting here the ID. And we are calling the function. So we say, okay, this is the ID. Give me the URL and I will do the redirection. Let's see if it works. Going back to my customers, I say add customer. And what we would expect now, and now a little bit careful here, look, please look here at the URL. It should now change to customer and then some kind of ID. This should be the ID of the new user, of course. I click on save and you see it has changed from new to 22 and that's because the redirection took place. Okay, and now let's come to showing a message. For that, we will not add a new customer, but update an existing one. So what I want to achieve is when I say, uh, when I am editing uh, this uh, customer that I want to get the message not a redirection, but the message that tells me changes have been saved. As I said in the beginning, it's always the same problem, just different shapes and variations, but we can always apply the same solution to it. In our case, since it is a message, we just use uh, instead the forward property, just the property message and add it to our action. So we have here actions. We, of course, we need to now switch to another action. It's now the update action. But here we say, well, I also will receive a message. Please tell me what should happen then. In my component, I can define the message. So, well, the messages changes have been saved. And last step is in my effect that I find the right property. That's update customer. That's the right observable. As I said before, we don't do a redirection here, but we just display a message instead. As I did before, I am adding a tab operator 
to my HTTP observable. And I have already injected the mat snack bar. So that's very easy for me. Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's just a module. That's, of course, the wrong one. Oh, there we are. And of course, in the same style, I just fetch the message, pass it to the open function, say, well, there should be an OK button, but that's it. So every time we are changing now a customer, we stay on the page, but we are getting a message that tells us that the changes have been saved. So I change this customer, I click on save, and as we see, here is the message box. Wonderful. And now the last thing, last thing, and that's probably, I mean, this will be very generic. So this is, this is something that you can also apply to other similar situations, because now we want to show a loading indicator. So this page also has a property. Let me quickly show you. We have here a loading property that when set to true hides the form and is showing a material spinner and we want to use this now while the HTTP request is ongoing in order to do this i will just do it for the update action of course i need to set the loading property here first to true and if we quickly check how it will look like if I click now on save, now the loading spinner comes, but of course the component doesn't know when the HTTP request has been fulfilled, and that's something that we have to implement now. It doesn't work like with the message or with the forwarding before. We need to, as I said before, we need to take on now a more generic approach, and this just means that we have to add a callback to our action. So I say this is a callback function, and this is the function that will be called again after the each HTTP request has finished. But it doesn't return any value. It's just a function that will execute some side effects inside of my component. So I'm going back to my component, and I say, well, what side effects do I want to execute? Well. It's not that hard it's just loading i'm setting loading to false yeah and also in the effect we have here our update method where we are showing the message and the same spot we are calling the callback function to make it a little bit better to make it more visible um, I will now also add a delay so that we see that the spinner shows and then also disappears. So let's say I have a delay of two and a half seconds. Let's go back and let's try it out. Save, spinner, two and a half seconds, goes away and we have our final message telling us that everything was all right. That's it. In NGRX, there is also a library which is called Router Store. Now, this is a library where every routing action is also passed on as a normal NGRX action, and you can do more or less everything in NGRX regarding the routing. Now, I try to avoid this library, although it is very good. The reason for that is that the way when, when you look at how Angular is designed, we see that when we are configuring the routings, or the routes, that every route is directly linked to a component, so they come in a pair. So, so naturally speaking, they, they, they both form a real bond together, so the root and the component. And that's why I try 
or I want that everything which is routing related is done in my components and not some, somewhere else. Of course, I know that there are certain edge cases in Angular where the router store or the router store might be the better uh, choice, then I use it. But for the general use cases, I try to avoid it and do my routing logic inside of my components. There is also a second reason why I, I am a little bit, or I'm not so optimistic regarding the router store. And this is because we have now two places where we can implement logic for the routing. This is in the components and in Nginx. And if you have a large team and you have two ways how to do things, then both uh, strategies will be done. So there will be some team members that will use Nginx and some others will do the same thing in the components. And of course, that's not what we want. We want to have consistency. We want that everything is done in more or less the same way so that everybody can easily find their way around. And that's it. I hope it was useful. If you have any further questions, just leave a comment. Please subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day and see you next time.